You know, it doesn't get much more Canadian than a Tim Hortons restaurant, although Tim Hortons, of course, now is also available in the USA. If a Canadian client calls us, Tim Hortons is usually one of the franchises that they have interest in asking about. Now, when I ask them, why Tim Hortons, I have yet to hear a single person give me a good answer other than there's always a lineup. Well, guess what? You don't get paid on lineups. And today we're gonna to take a look at why Tim Hortons may not be as great of a franchise as many people think. You know, a wise man once said, you can't step in the same river twice. And the river that Tim Hortons franchise owner stepped in 10 and 20 years ago is a completely different river than it is today. What people fail to realize is that just because someone purchased a Tim Hortons franchise 25 years ago, they have a fantastic location and make a lot of money. And these people, of course, do exist. That doesn't mean that you will. A little known fact that a lot of people don't know is that all new proposed Tim Hortons franchise locations are first offered to existing franchisees. So how good of a location do you think that you're going to get when all that's available to you is leftovers? Now taken from the Tim Hortons FDD, the 2017 US FDD, it's about 680,000 to 1.8 million for a standard shop. Uh, most shops are gonna cost you about a million dollars. Royalty is four and a half percent and 6% if you don't lease from Tim Hortons. Ad fees about 4%. Now taken from their website, you are going to need a minimum $1 million net worth and $300,000 in cash to even be considered by the group. And we get a lot of investor groups and business people who have several other businesses and are looking at Tim Hortons as well. The first thing that I ask them is, do you intend on working your other businesses full time? And if the answer is yes, you can't buy a Tim Hortons because they will only accept owners who are willing to commit to them full time. They also look for prior management experience, solid business acumen, and you will also need to have a partner. Now, I was once told a joke, the reason that you need a partner with Tim Hortons is because they will run a single human being into the ground. Tim Hortons was founded back in 1964 by Canadian hockey player Tim Horton and his partner, and for many years, Tim Hortons expanded to become one of the most iconic Canadian brands. But as we always try and illustrate to people, Every brand has a life cycle. And unfortunately, by the time these brands expand to such a size that everybody wants one because they're everywhere, the party is generally over. And I'll bet you didn't know that Burger King purchased Tim Hortons for $11.4 billion back in 2014, and they became a subsidiary of the Oakville-based restaurant brands International. Now, RBI is majority owned by a company in Brazil called 3G Capital. And when RBI took over, many analysts knew that this wasn't going to be pretty, and we agreed. Soon thereafter, there was a Canadian policy alternative study that suggested this company takeover, and I quote here, is likely to have overwhelmingly negative consequences for Canadians. And the study, study analyzed 3G Capital's past history of takeovers, and they've taken over companies like uh, Burger King, Heinz, and Anheuser-Busch, and stated, and again I quote, it has a 30-year history of aggressive cost-cutting which could hurt Tim Hortons employees, small business people, Canadian taxpayers, and consumers. And we'll cover that in a minute, but uh, before we do, let's step back a little bit uh, a little bit in time. About 10 to 15 years ago, Tim Hortons switched from baking their goods fresh in the store to having their goods par-baked, which is, uh, it's partly cooked food, it's frozen, and then it's delivered. But Tim Hortons' very slogan was always fresh. And this is where many diehards thought Timmy's had turned to the dark side. In 2008, there was actually a class action lawsuit over this switch to par baking for breach of contract, breach of duty of fair dealing, negligent misrepresentation, and unjust enrichment. And the lawsuit cited that franchisees' costs to produce a single donut literally tripled from six cents to 18 cents per donut required new equipment and other expensive investments. Now that case was eventually dismissed. However, needless to say that franchisees were not happy now that they were making three times less on donuts than they had uh, prior to this whole par baking incident. 
and now they also had to buy these goods from corporate. And remember, you can't step in the same river twice, so this river has already gone by. It's three times the price to make a donut, and that passed over a decade ago. Now, since that time, Tim Hortons and the franchisee, franchisees have, have had a pretty turbulent relationship. Here's an $850 million class action lawsuit where they were sued for bullying and intimidation. Uh, the statement of claim read, Since the time of the corporate takeover of Tim Hortons, the relationship between Tim Hortons and its franchisees has become more adversarial than amicable. On behalf of a franchisee group called the Great White North Franchisee Association, Tim Hortons claims this organization is only a few negative owners and has warned franchisees about spreading misinformation, as they call it, to analysts. Now, the president of the Great White North Association, however, suggests that over half of all Tim Hortons franchisees have joined this battle against corporate. Now, it's no secret that many franchisees allege that the company culture is under attack, that their cost cutting is going in all the wrong places, and this is another $500 million class action suggesting the company is gouging them. And this is on top of the $850 million lawsuit. Now, beyond franchisee dissatisfaction, public sentiment towards Tim Hortons has also dropped a massive 25 points in more than 40 spots in a recent corporate reputation study of which corporations Canadians admire the most. Now, Tim Hortons has always been a top five but this year they've dropped way down to number 50. Now, just a few months ago, if you live on to, in Ontario, Canada, you've seen this, there was uproars and protests and calls for boycotts in Ontario when Tim Hortons franchisees clawed back workers' benefits, tips, and other entitlements, including free coffee. The No Timmy's Tuesday boycott encourages people to go to an independent donut shop or to make their own at home every single Tuesdays. Now this was brought about by an increase in the minimum wage in Ontario from $11.60 to $14, which prompted franchisees to try and offset these labor costs by eliminating paid breaks and increasing the employee contributions for their benefits. Now this is a tough spot because from the one side, uh, and if you've ever seen a Tim Hortons employee at a drive-through that's busy, they really should be paid at least a hundred dollars an hour. That is a really tough grind and I have absolutely nothing but respect for these hard-working people who are putting food on the table of their families. Now the other side of the coin of course is franchise owners will now lose an average of almost a quarter million dollars a year because of this wage increase. And I'll tell you, making $250,000 less especially stores that might not be enorm enormously profitable is going to hurt. So franchisees, of course, at this point have asked corporate, hey, can you help us raise prices to cover this a bit? Well, guess how well that's going. So is Tim Hortons a good investment? Ongoing battles with corporate, public sentiment is dropping, you've got increased costs, you've got lower revenues, you've got the fact that premium locations are unlikely or impossible to find, you've got corporate with a history of being difficult, we don't make the decision, we just bring you some of the facts. Now, some investors are looking ahead trying to find the, the next franchise that is going to be the Tim Hortons in the next 10-15 years. So, what 95% of the people do in these cases is flock to what everyone else is running to, same as in stocks, same as in real estate bubbles, and you have most people rush in just before the decline when everyone's rushing in. Now, the small emerging brands, that's something you have to remember today, are the ones that are most likely to make the millionaires who purchase the master franchise rights, the area developer licenses, and all that other good stuff. Now, in the meantime, can Tim Horton, Horton's turn, Tim Horton's, that should be their new name, can they turn this around, go back to where they were at their peak? I don't know. Time will only tell. We'll uh, keep our eye on Tim Hortons. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like things like this. And if you need help researching or finding a franchise, give the experts a call at Franchise City. Thanks for watching.